Hey guys, welcome to Isaac Newton the Great, and today we are going to be talking about a very interesting topic. We're going to be talking about, we're going to be discussing whether or not it's possible that we are living in a simulation. I'm so excited for it, but anyway, I'm just going to, before I actually get started, I'm just going to say the usual. Um, if it's your first time to my channel, welcome, and if you are already a subscriber, welcome back. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and I would be very happy if you could also subscribe to my channel for more videos on physics or philosophy, because that's kind of the direction that I want to go. So anyway, whether or not we live in a simulation, I'm just going to be a bit more specific with the topic, because usually when we talk about simulation or living in a simulation or possibility of living in a simulation, there's kind of two general directions that one would choose, like you would choose to go. Like one is the philosophy direction and one is the physics direction. And today we are going to be mostly discussing the physics direction because honestly, I think that is a bit more straightforward than the philosophy kind of thing. But the philosophy direction is also very interesting. Like we can talk about like uh, brain, brain in a vat. That's very interesting. Like what it would mean for your life if you were just a brain in a vat. And, things you do don't really mean anything at all. And the physics one, we're going to define a simulation as like a computer simulation. So so like a computer code, like whether our our life is some whether we're living in someone else's computer code, which which is going to be like kind of the direction that we are going to go. So let's get into it. So a computer simulation. And I actually got the idea of making this video when I read a Scientific American article. So a lot of the stuff that I am going to be talking about is actually sourced from that article. So just don't accuse me of plagiarism, I gave them credit. Anyway, so the idea that we are living in a computer simulation actually sounds like something that could be some familiar movies like The Matrix. Mm, so when we think about it, it's more like we get like the sci-fi feel from it, but actually It's more it's more true I mean, it's more valid than it would seem to you and I'm going to be explaining why like now when we think about it It sounds like that's a great story idea. That's a great movie idea but perhaps that's actually the case in our world and I'm gonna try to convince you I mean, I personally don't I personally don't believe in it, but let's see. Well, we're gonna see like what the other professors say because I honestly, I don't really have a say in this. I'm just gonna tell you guys what other people think and you can decide for yourself. So actually Neil deGrasse Tyson, I think most of you uh, would actually have heard of him. He he actually held, um, he actually kind of held a discussion between other scientists and and just discussing whether it's possible that we live in a simulation and he himself would put the odds at about 50 50 and honestly my opinion i don't think that's very professional to just say it's 50 50 because um, that just sounds very strange with no proof to back it up and just giving a pro probability like that uh but but yeah 50 50 um, i'm gonna justify like kind of like why he would say this and i will justify this using like words of other scientists as well mm, so actually other some other physicists would actually put it way more than 50 50. some some people are even like cert like close to certain that we are living in a simulation so let's just put neil degrasse tyson aside and look at some other some other scientist so there's neil bostrom from oxford university i actually made lots of notes to prepare for this video so <laughs> yeah so neil bostrom thinks that the members of an advanced civilization with enormous computing power might actually just decide to run some simulations on their ancestors so if they have that much computing power so what so what professor bostrom is saying is that we could just be one of the simulations of their ancestors and he actually thinks that it's more possible that we are part of the simulation than the actual 
the actual advanced creatures themselves who is going to grow into the future and be able to have that much computing power to run the simulations because let's say i don't know if i made myself clear but let's say that they are able to do this kind of computation and they have the computation power they have like the data power and everything uh they're probably going to run more than one simulation of their ancestors let's say they run 10 simulations at the same time of their ancestors then it's then because there's 10 of them are simulations and only one time it's the actual thing so it's actually a lot more probable that we are living in one of the 10 simulations than the actual one time where they actually lived i'm not sure if i made myself clear on that but if you have like any more questions or clarifications just feel free to leave a comment below and i'll try to reply to everything so that's neil bostrom and yeah so his exact words he said they would have the ability to run many such simulations to the point that the vast majority of minds would actually be artificial ones within such simulation rather than original ancestral minds okay he just put it so much more clearer than i did so i hope that was that was very understandable so he's just saying that it's more likely that we're among the simulated minds than one of the original minds and there's actually some other reasons that I wrote that we could be living in a simulation. Mm, there's actually a few other reasons that I wrote down that is kind of justifying that why we could be living in a simulation. And as a physicist or as any scientist or as a mathematician, we know that the universe is running on a lot of um, mathematical laws. Like now we're just, you know, describing the universe using we can describe the curvature of space-time using tensors and we can use we can use like Lagrangian and Hamiltonian equations I mean Hamiltonian equation, equations to describe the quantum world and Lagrangian to express a lot of like motion and yeah just we can go on and on about it but a lot of like we're describing the universe using mathematical laws and a computer program is also a surprise written on mathematical laws what a coincidence, eh? So, just thinking that they're both based on mathematical laws, if someone were to create a simulated world by create by writing a code for it, chances are it's also going to be based on math. And we're discovering we're discovering more and more of this math. And actually, another another scientist called um, James Gates from University of Maryland, he said that I'm just going to quote him. In my research, I found this very strange thing. I was driven to error correcting codes. They're what makes browsers work. So why were they in equations that I was studying about quarks and electrons and supersymmetry? So this brought me to the stark realization that I could no longer say that people like, uh, who's Max? People like Max are crazy. Oh, okay. So, mm, so yeah, I actually skipped over Max. But there's this other, there's this other um, professor from MIT called Max Tegmark. Forgive me if I pronounce his name wrong, but mm, he was actually just um, he was actually just talking more about the idea of mathematical laws that I wasn't speaking about. And here's his quote on it. I should have said it before, but here it is. He said, "If I were a character in a computer game, I would eventually discover that the rules are rigid and mathematical." Um, just that just reflects that the computer code in which it was written. So let's say that you are this Mario, and and you're like going to say Princess Peach, and then eventually you're gonna discover that, hmm, interesting. I can go in a straight line. I can jump. There are rules, and my jumps are just described by this this um this equation that describes like a parabolic jump kind of thing. So you're going to discover rules like this. So this is what um, Max Tegmark was saying. He's saying that if he was like a character in a computer game and he is he has like a rational mind, he would probably eventually write write math equations to describe the, the, the simulated world that he lives in. Oh, no, there's a wasp in my room. How did that even get inside? I'm so scared. Sorry. So there's actually also um, other physicists who are 
much more skeptical than people like Nick or Max or James, our dudes. <laughs> so Lisa Randall from Harvard University said, quote, I don't know why this higher species would want to simulate us. So he think, she thinks that the possibility that uh, we are in a simulated world is effectively zero. Which is which kind of hurts because, I mean, if I were a higher species, I'd want to simulate me and all of us. I think it would be really fun just to watch. It's like watching like a reality show except for everything's actually real. But yeah, I guess not all physicists agree that we are living in a simulated world. Mm. Yeah, so there's actually also some kind of like experimental, I wouldn't quite call it evidence, but I wrote experimental evidence here, but it's more like things that could, like arguments that could kind of convince you that we might just be in a simulated world. It's kind of like that. So because um, maybe some of you are programmers, we know that sometimes we do like to cut corners when writing our codes. We like to make it as simple as possible so that it's easy to fix, it's easy to look for the bugs in the code. Mm. So also like we want to make it easy so that the simulation can run faster and easier. So there's many reasons that we want to cut corners and uh, there's this other professor from MIT called Zore Devaldi, probably did pronounce that wrong. So he said that if there's an underlying simulation of the universe that has the problem of a finite computation, a finite computation of resources, just as we do, then the laws of physics have to put on a finite set of points in a finite volume. Then we go back to see what kind of signatures we find that tell us uh, that we started from a non-continuous space-time. So in order to really further prove that, that we are in a simulation, uh, because chances are, I mean, from our, like, no matter if it's energy conservation or, or information conservation laws, uh, if we were to run a simulation, it's definitely going to be run on a finite set of points. So it w so space-time would not be continuous, but it would be discrete. But how do we really prove that it's discrete, right? It's not going to be a very easy thing. Like, I can't, like, no experiments are going to come up in my mind about how to prove that we're actually living in a discrete space-time. Maybe you can, like, prove it by observing cosmic rays, but I don't know, it's just an idea, but probably not, probably not going to happen very soon. And plus, actually, it's almost impossible to prove that, to prove that we are not in a simulation. Actually, both, well, it's, uh, okay, actually, this other um, physicist from NYU puts it clearer. He just said, you're not going to get proof that we're not in a simulation because guess what? Any evidence we get could be simulated. Hmm, interesting. So perhaps like maybe at some point in the history, scientists were actually getting close to proving that we are living in a simulation. But then the higher species who created us just saw that and they were like, nope, I'm gonna stop you right there and then just programs the brain of that human being and he's gonna be like, okay, we're not in a simulation. We are original, we are created by God, we are happy. So maybe that's what happened. Okay, but now let's just make the assumption that we are living in a simulation. So what happens now if we're living in a simulation? Does that necessarily change anything? Like, let's say right now someone, let's say that we did get conclusive proof that we are living in a simulation. Maybe your, your physics professor just told you that we are definitely living in a simulation. How is that going to change your life? You have this party to go to on Friday night. Are you gonna be like, oh, we're living in a simulation. I'm so sad, I'm gonna go home and cry. No, you're not gonna do that. Nothing's gonna change. Your life is still gonna be the same. You're still gonna live like maybe like 80, 70, 80, 90 years, depending on what kind of country or medical healthcare system you have. You're still going to live the same life and nothing really is going to change and people who believe in God are still going to believe in God and people... Well, actually, the idea of God, that's actually something that's very interesting that we can talk about. Mm. So, um, who said this? Gates, which is I think a professor from um, University of Maryland, he said something about 
simulation and God. He said, if the simulation hypothesis is valid, then we open the door to eternal life and resurrection and things that formally have been discussed in the realm of religion. And, and the reason is quite simple. If we're programs in a computer, then as long as it's not damaged, I can always rerun the program. So now this almost kind of brings, brings us to like a cycle where you just live your life over and over again in this program as long as nothing is wrong with it. So we're just like Mario, like, you know, you say Princess Peach, you can play again. And there, that's, that's your resurrection. Or if you die, you have a second life. Or computer games these days, if you watch an ad, you can just live your life again. So, so that kind of like resurrection stuff that is discovered in the realm of religion, it could just be, if it's a code, then it's a lot simpler. And how about God? Like, let's think about God. So then who would be our God? Could it be possible that since if we're, let's go to the first hypothesis that we had, that we are just like the ancestors of some higher species. So who is God? Are they God for creating the simulation of us, even though they are just like us, but in the future and have the computing power? Or perhaps like we're just like on the computer of like some future teenager in his parents' garage and just running simulations of us. Does that make him our God? Just like when we play a Mario game and we control Mario and when he jumps and when he does everything. So we're kind of like the god that created Mario. So this is just like something that you can think about. So what does that do to our religion if we are in a simulation? So I think we can say that we are the gods of our own computer creations. Mm. So yeah, but so that's pretty much all I'm going to say about God. I think let's see what. Oh, okay. So this is actually very interesting. Another idea that I did jot down. I think this was also mentioned in a Science Big American article. But how about this? What if there is a bug in the program and the whole thing crashes all of a sudden and our world just stops? What happens then? So that's just something to think about. Um, and I would like to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. But before I end this video, I would actually like to bring up something interesting. I want to bring up, this is going to be like a bit like borderline philosophy, but we talked about all these physical laws and from the physics perspective that we are living in a simulation. But how about, now let's think about consciousness. Like right now, there's just, you know, that classic quote, I think therefore I am. Right now I am thinking and I am speaking. And I am conscious because I know what it's like to be me. Of course, I can't prove to you that I'm conscious, but you know that you're conscious. That's enough to that's enough to know that there is consciousness in the universe. How do you simulate consciousness? Because I would say that something like Mario probably does not have consciousness. Like Mario probably doesn't know what it's like to be Mario. But you and I, I hope, we do have consciousness. We know what it's like to be us. We know what it's like to make all of our decisions. Or, I don't know if you don't believe in free will, but anyway, I think we can all agree on consciousness, that there is an identity to each person. There is what it's like to be me and what it's like to be you. So how would you explain consciousness in a computer program? Because a computer program gives you laws and no free will. Um, but free will and So my video just got cut again, but yeah, like I was just talking about consciousness and um, yeah, so how do you explain consciousness if we are living in a simulation? And I want to hear about your ideas in the comment section below. So anyway, thanks for watching this video and I hope you maybe learned something or maybe like makes you think a little bit because personally for me, I always need something to grind my brain on. Like if I'm like walking to school, walking to the bus stop, I need to be thinking about something or I, or I get really bored. So I hope this gave you some new ideas to think about in your next few hours. And I would really like to hear your thoughts. Like, honestly, I really mean it. So that's all to my video and I'll see you next time.